Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. I think you're getting the impression that something big is going down. The NYXL dominance. And that puts the Florida Mayhem in the lead. Charge putting on a show right now, man. And we are going out with a bang. And the Shanghai Dragons, they find their victory here. And that should get the job done. Washington Justice, Philadelphia Fusion, a bit of vindication for them now. Toronto Defiant, take it away. Wow. Atlanta Raid, making it happen. And that is how you dominate in Overwatch. What's up, Overwatch fans? We are coming to you live all the way from Atlanta, Georgia, for the Bud Light Atlanta homestand. We're so excited to be here in the Cobb Energy Center. It is sold out for the first time here for some awesome Overwatch action coming your way today. Welcome to the show, everybody. I am your host, Chris Puckett, and I am joined by the best of the best in the business. We've got Zoe, we've got Brent, we've got Sideshow, our experts from all over the planet. Today, we're all in the South. How are we feeling, team? Fantastic, loving it here. Uh, Southern hospitality does never disappoint. Yeah, my body is actually quite ruined. All I've consumed is fried chicken over the past two days. <laughs> Sounds delightful. Uh, it's I problematic. Don't know. It's been good. It the heat is intense as well. Oh, yeah. my, my poor UK body is struggling to adjust. <laughs> <laughs> well, the matches are definitely going to be heating up today. We've got playoff spots on the line this week. And as we close out our stage three, Josh, taking a look at the standings right now, what's going on here? Well, there were five teams locked in coming into this weekend for the Stage 3 playoffs, and we just saw New York lock up a spot by beating the Florida Mayhem earlier on today. So there's only one spot left in the Stage 3 playoffs, and those are going to be happening next week. So there's still a lot to play for here for the teams that are trying to get into that last spot. That last spot left is still wide open with four teams that can get in after the Stage 3 playoffs, though. We're all going to be turning our attention to the, where the real money is, so that is our end of the season playoffs. That's right, Pocket. And looks like the Vancouver Titans, as well as New York Excelsior, will win their divisions and get those top two seats. And for the rest of the teams, the key is just to get into those top six spots. Now, if you don't get into the top six, you'll have to get in through the play-in tournament at the end of the year, and that's going to be tough. And look at how close it is in the middle here as well. We have literally 18 of our 20 teams in the running for players or if they've already made it already it's an absolute madness buggy honestly it's getting crazy it's getting crazy and you love to see it now speaking of the season playoffs it's time to dive in to our match of the week that of course is the atlanta rain taking on the toronto defiant and we got two teams who are very much still in the playoff hunt they are in the overall playoff hunt, but it's been a really rough stage three for both of these two teams. I've got some good news and some bad news. Pocket, which one do you want first? Uh, give me the uh, bad news. The bad news <laughs> yeah. first, okay. The bad news is that both of these teams are still winless in stage three. Ooh. So they haven't been able to pick up those key victories yet. The good news though, one of the teams has to win today. And to be fair, <laughs> they've both started looking a bit better as well. Okay, Josh, we gotta be fair here though. If we're looking at the Atlanta Reigns schedule, they had the toughest schedule imaginable in stage three. They first went up against the San Francisco Shock, a juggernaut of the league who just came off the victory in stage two, right? And they made that really close. Afterwards, they had to go up against the Vancouver Titans, the victors of stage one. And then they went on to face off against the Shanghai Dragons who look absolutely dominant in this very stage. And then they also had a loss against the Philadelphia Fusion. So all those games, they played very, very close. But again, Atlanta had the toughest schedule of any team in this entire league yet, and yet they make it close. Well, if we learned one thing though at our Dallas homestand, it's playing in front of a home crowd can fire up your team. You can take it to the next level, and that's exactly what Atlanta needs going into this Stage 4. Absolutely. Some of their games in Stage 4 are pretty winnable as well. Atlanta should absolutely be focusing on that stage at the moment. They Coming up against teams like Paris Eternal, that should be an opportunity for them. The Washington Justice, we just saw play. That's a team that they can take wins against. And maybe the Outlaws, the Fuel, the Uprising, this could be a very successful stage for the Atlanta Reign if they put their focus there, but there's still some opportunities to take wins towards the end of Stage 3. Those are the games that they now start needing to ramp up for.
Absolutely. Now, that's stage four, but we got to talk about stage three because the games are going down today, and the team on the other side of the stage for Atlanta Reign is going to be the Toronto Defiant, a team that has been rebuilding and adding all kinds of new faces in the last two weeks, Brent. Yeah, absolutely, Puckett. They've recently added two new main tanks in the form of Gods and Sharik as well, but I really want to talk about the DPS players you're seeing on your screen here. Logix used to play for the Florida Mayhem last year. Uh, he's back in the league now, and he is absolutely dunking on kids as it stands on his Widowmaker, but also Ooh. he likes to play a lot of other hitscan heroes on top of that the sombra which has been excellent for him all around and you'll see it as well later i mean the guy is just a phenomenal talent but second to that mangachu is also coming for the team and this is a guy who is a veteran of overwatch but is only just in the league for the first time now here today and he's adding so much with just his fire alone as well really flexible into this role we're seeing a resurgence of fire in the general game as well a lot of teams running her these days so very impressive and They've got a lot to work towards now as well in rebuilding and pushing forward this new roster. We've got a lot of new faces on to Toronto and, of course, a lot of new strategy being shown in their game. But if we're looking purely at mechanical skill, we know everybody that is in the Overwatch League has sick game. So, Josh, who are the players to look out for today? My eye is going to be on Ducko for the Atlanta Reign because this has been, in my opinion, the best player for Atlanta. He came in and he made big waves for them. He's playing the D.Va and he's going to be key to shutting down the star DPS players on the other side for Toronto. And we've seen a bit of a shift recently in terms of how strategy goes down in the league. It's been that these D.Va players have switched over to playing Sombra, which is a big shift in terms of uh, skill set for a lot of these guys. We haven't really seen that much Sombra from Ducko, but they do have FRD sat on the bench. Uh, comparatively on D.Va, these guys, uh, FRD is a little worse overall. The statistics don't quite show it. He's still putting up decent numbers there, but you'd rather have Dako in for those games. Having said that though, he plays a lot more Sombra than Dako does. And that's where they can really make use of this guy that's just been sat on the bench for them. It'll be interesting to see who Atlanta decides to put in that starting lineup for our first map, but we're coming to the end of the pre-show. I gotta get the official predictions. Bren, we're starting with you today. <laughs> are you going with the hometown Atlanta rain or are you feeling a win for the up north Toronto Defiant? I think you'd be silly not to go for the Atlanta to rain in this current scenario. That's what I'm going to be predicting in this match here today. I feel like they're going to be the ones to take it. Again, you've got the home crowd behind you. It's almost like a seventh player when it comes to playing with them. I see the crowds cheering as well. I mean, you can't be you can't be anything but hype for this match they're going to be playing. All right, so Brent's going with Atlanta. So where are you going tonight? Oh, there's no other way to go but with the Atlanta rain. They look hot. They looked on fire this stage. And I can see them doing that here in front of the home crowd as well. Josh, last but not least, is it a three-way for Atlanta? Atlanta have had some really good performances. They were able to take down New York twice, which was really impressive. But with the new additions to Toronto, with Magachu and Logix, I'm sorry, I'm no. going to have to go with the Toronto Defiant for this one. You're mad. The Toronto Defiant... <laughs> <laughs> <You're> mad. <laughs> I, I'm not in the right territory to be saying that, but I think they've got a great opportunity. I can hear the crowd booing me as well. It, it, I think it's going to happen. This is a very <laughs> strong team right now. I love and off it. the back of the DPS, they're going to take it. We are split here on the desk, but when we come back, we've got your starting lineups and the first map in an epic series. So don't go anywhere. When we come back. It's Uber and Mr. X with the call. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Bud Light, the official beer of the Overwatch League.
wherever the season takes you, you can always come home. Dogman hyping up the crowd here. With bold personalities and immense individual skill, the Atlanta Reign are hungry to prove themselves to the hometown faithful. Atlanta Reign making it happen. They shut down NYXL again. But the Toronto Defiant have made big changes, bringing in a new tank line and dangerous DPS stars. Oh, huge EMP catches five. Every win gets you closer to the season playoffs, and both teams are eager to prove they belong. It is a slaughter! A threat from the north. Toronto Defiant! They keep pushing forward! A phoenix rising in the south. After this match, everyone's gonna look at this team a little bit differently. Rain, Defiant, match of the week. Hello, Atlanta! What a pleasure it is to be here. The Atlanta Rain homestand weekend. My name is Mitch Leslie, joined on the mic here by Matthew Morello. And finally, for the first time, the Rain will play their home game. Uh, it's going to be an incredible match between Atlanta and Toronto. Toronto, a new look roster. They bring in a lot of new pieces over the last week or so. But Atlanta, I mean, they have a huge advantage in front of the home crowd, I feel. I mean, let's not waste any time. Let's bring them out with the help, of course, of one man who needs no introduction over the Golden Boy on this stage. Atlanta rain and this is going to be awesome you guys ready for today I think we could do it a little bit better so I'm gonna say it one more time Atlanta are you ready that's right that's right and now from the ashes a Phoenix will rise and rain down from above Roll it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the stage, your home team. It's the Atlanta Rain! With the Phoenix leading the way, let's keep it going for the team. First up, it's the German flex support, rocking the flag, it's Kodak! Greatest Chad in the Overwatch League, Baby Bay! Next up, the Russian hit scan specialist, Enlair! Followed by the And then the backup main tank, Gator! One half of the Atlanta front line, Pockpo! Up next, put your hands together for Daco! The most aggressive Lucio in ranked play, it's Funny Astro! The two-time Chinese Contenders Champion, welcome to Atlanta, Urser! Welcome to the stage, F.R.D. And fine. 
finally give it up for the Finnish boob god, Masa! Ladies and gentlemen, one more time, your Atlanta Reign! I, now, I need, I need to see who's in this Phoenix mask over here. Who, who, sir, who, who's, what, what's going on? Oh my, it's the friend! Oh my word! I gotta ask you a question, man. What's going on? Anything you wanna say to the people here in Atlanta? Let's go, dude! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your Atlanta Reign. Here is your starting six. It's Baby Bay, Dog Man. Erster, Massa, Potpo, and FRD. And of course, our challengers. Welcome to the stage, the Toronto Defiant. And now it's time to get it on. Let's send it over to your casters. Take it away. Thank you very much, Golden Boy. And that was definitely a traditional Georgian greeting for the <laughs> Toronto Defiant. But the fact of the matter is, both of these teams are still looking for victory here in stage three. And we know how difficult. Still uh, worried about it. Probably not. That was much. certainly the entrance that Atlanta fans deserve. I think so. Some fan gets to wear that Atlanta Ray mascot <laughs> head forever, basically. But uh, there's Dogman on your screen right now, of course. Uh, been known to address other people, other peers, as you will, as feeders. <laughs> but, you know, it's been a rough stage for these guys. That said, you know, I mean, this is where the matches get a little bit better. They played a lot of really good teams really close. And we'll see if they can take the win versus Toronto today. And we've talked about Dogman as a double-edged sword. You saw third in final blows per 10 minutes on Zenyatta in the last two stages. But the issue with him is he, he either giveth or taketh away. Yeah, yeah. He's either going to get you that really great opening pick, or he is going to get picked off himself and potentially lose you the team fight. He's so. what I like to call a binary player. He's a zero or he's a one, right? He's either going to die or he's going to make an awesome pick. There's no gray area. Here's our math for today. Oyos o Oasis will be our first map. Oasis, I'm inventing new <laughs> words today. Ah, uh, yes, it's a good one. Well, as you can see, Toronto Reign, both teams winless in this stage. And we'll have to see who gets it. Their first win. The very first win of the stage is going to happen right here. Is Atlanta Reign going to take it in front of the home crowd, or will the Toronto Defiant defy the crowd and uh, deny the rain from the win? As you can see, both teams at 7 and 12, so still fighting to be in that top 12 position that will get each of these teams into the season playoffs. Right on, here we go. Toronto Defiant, of course, with those new additions too. Logics, Mangachu, God's coming in recently. Still relying on Yakpong at the main tank. No Shirk today just yet. And we'll see what it Oh, Logic's out early. Good start for Masa. Plus, there's the support action right off the bat. I won't complain about that. Atlanta Reign, I mean, you come into this, you're a little bit mentally, uh, you know, broken from going 0-5 so far, but the home town crowd has got to help, right? Well, maybe not Baby Bay, though. Mangachu finds one with the rocket there. And now Toronto trying to move back onto the point. Uh, you can't die like that if you're going to be Baby Bay coming into this no. scenario and you're playing that Sombra. You know, he's been struggling a bit on the Sombra overall. Doesn't stop the Atlanta Reign from flipping the point first. You can see they're all taking cover right now, trying to get away from Baby Bay's rocket and use that Moira healing to keep themselves topped up. That's the thing, I mean. Hack. Oh, let the stun Mangachu down. Urser taking advantage of the hack from Gods. And Toronto trying to flip it. They can't quite do it, though. And Atlanta Reign 
maintains control for now. And Baby Bay gets back in time to get the hack off onto Mangachu. Yeah. And then that change right into the stun. So easy pick off there. Coming in for the Atlanta Rain. Baby Bay coming back at the right time. And they're going to continue to tick up that percent. Yep. Toronto now going to make some changes. Mangachu and Logix. Looks like they will be going for the Sombra 3-2-1 composition. I mean, it's really tough to retake with the Fara if you end up losing the point. So it makes sense. God's really close to an EMP as well. So they can maybe win a fight off that, get some chance to build the other ultimates. Baby Bay, though, standing by with his own EMP ready to go. Here we go. We dive in. And there it is. He got a couple of them, but it's enough to get the team a win. And now here's the question. They're going to pop the gold lesson still. This is a time that they can go back and trade off some of their heroes. Defiant is going to have better staying power on the point with the Reinhardt and the Zarya. Dogman does not want to be playing necessarily this Moira any longer, but they're just not going to swap. With it. Nah, he's going to stick with the uh, Moira and give it a shot anyway. Huh. Uh, they do have time to swap, though, after if they in case they lose this next team fight to the EMP, sure. they'll be able to run it back. They're going to be in one fight territory up near 80 percent. I suppose you just don't want to take the risk sometimes, especially when if you uh, get it taken back, you have like a full 100. Stunned. Whoa, Ursa again. Gods went for the hack, got wrecked, didn't even get a chance to use the EMP. And now Popo just juggling everybody in the center chamber. And what do you say, Doa? Yeah, they have it. Making it look easy. The last two team fights, God hasn't been able to use his EMP. Yeah. Uh, it's been kind of disastrous for the Toronto to find, and now they're basically going to get blanked here. The EMP is going to be a desperation I mean, attempt, and they're not even going to get there. No, not even close. You lose a fight like that, nobody can get back. God's finally popping the EMP at the end. It's a bit too late, man. The round's over. Atlanta Rain winning the first round here at their homestand weekend. Man, Urser showing up big. Yeah. Some serious denial that he had onto God's Sombra right there. Heads up play. We talk about the skill that Daco has on this lineup a lot, but Erster making the big Brigida plays necessary to close out that round 100 to 0. Well, it was a bit weird, right? Because God seemed to be a little bit out of sync with the rest of his team. He was there early, so he couldn't EMP because his team couldn't follow up, and he decides to just go for a hack when the entire team is standing right there. I mean, that's a. It's a rough decision. I think we need to see God settle down a little bit, think about uh, coordinating with the team a bit more, and see what they can do as we go on to University here. Well, God's going to mix it up once again. Remember, God's used to be a DPS player yeah. back in the day, so this is not unusual that he would be flexing to this position, but they're going to try the May right now. Played a lot of Reaper back then, actually. Yeah, so they're going to try now and force their way onto the point. That wall is not going to do very much, but the Sleep Dart might. Uh, maybe. We'll see. Masa gets woken up. He's going to be fine. There's a hack on the Pokepo, though, and a big bio grenade comes in. God's is down, though, regardless. Atlanta Rain not being denied. They're going to take on Aiden and Mangachu somehow. The Farmers he drops as well. They only lost Erster. Great start for the Atlanta Reign again. Uh, it's going to walk up the stairs right now. Reset from the Toronto Defiance. No chance. And the percent starts ticking up again. Atlanta yeah. Reign, they're just going to play standard. This is how you play this point with the Moira when you're heading into a multi-DPS composition. And once again, Defiant, their initial awesome. look doesn't work. And they can't use the bay anymore because they can't force the Reign to walk through a choke. Yep, yeah, pretty much. Now Dogman pops a coalescence, goes in, cop shots immediately. You can't lose your Zarya like that. I know he just swapped it. Man, that hurts, and Atlanta Rain just looking absolutely dominant right now. At least for the Defiant Logics, we'll have the EMP heading into this next fight. No ultimates available. Popo might try something a little bit sneaky with this Shatter. Looks like he's going to play pretty far forward. Get the Shatter. Oh, oh, oh. No, nope, he's going to stand up in front. Logics over the top of the EMP, though, but the Shatter delivering quite a few to the Defiant. Can they turn this into a win, though? They got Popo, but they need more. So what that play does, though, Doa, is it allows the rain to back all the way up right here. Yeah. Are they going to actually hit anybody else? Looks like oh, the grab comes in. Yeah, Yakpung there to try to protect gods. Does it successfully, though. Neko gets healed in the end here. Yakpung a little bit low. Ooh, nearly dropped down the pit as well. Atlanta rain recovering really nicely from that EMP shatter. Now, Yakpung has his shatter available. Sound very on the defiant as well, but they need that aggression. Can they go ahead and shatter? Hits Baby Bay. Can they get the kill, though? I don't know. Popo a little bit low here. Gods with the grab charged up. 
A lot of members of Rain getting bounced around, and now the kills are coming in. Pokepo drops, and Toronto Defiant may have found an opportunity to flip it here. Already over 80% though for Rain, though. So Rain, I don't think you'd be too worried about this. And the EMP at the end, ooh, I don't know if you needed to use that. I mean, they, the logic's over there. They felt like they had to just because they need yes. to win this team fight or they lose the map. Atlanta Rain, though, they're going to be thrilled with everything that happened. Baby yeah. Bay, remember, he started that fight with a Graviton Surge, built up another one during the course of that fight. And now they are coming back. They know there's no sound barrier. Aid used it to initiate the, the remainder of that fight. And so what are you going to do now if you're the Defiant? you got to hope this mana boost is huge. Yep, pretty much. Maybe he's got the ground. They can walk in with that. There's a shatter. Wow, he just goes for it. Pokemo being brave with that one. Now they're going to follow up with the grab. A shatter comes in, gets canceled, though. Yakpung not able to get it off in time. And he's going to drop Atlanta Rain charging back into this one. They lose their Reinhardt, but they've got enough here. Aid did not get the sound barrier off. He got pooped in the air and never landed. And look at that. Atlanta Rain with a 2-0 in half one. Very clean play from the Atlanta Rain. Yeah. In that point, especially, knowing when to drop back, knowing how to re-engage, punishing the lack of D.Va by building up the second Graviton, which helps them seal the deal on map one. Really solid map one for Atlanta Rain. Good start for their first match here at the Homestand Weekend. We'll see what they can do in map two when we come back. The Overwatch League is powered by Intel. Game, record, stream without compromise on Intel Core i7. And by Omen by HP, the official PC and display of the Overwatch League. Welcome back, guys. That's right. The tickets are now on sale for the grand finals in Philly. It's going to be a lot of fun. We'll see if Philly can make it back or, uh, you know, we were talking about this a little bit earlier. Well, I was talking about this a little bit earlier on the ESPN desk that uh, that maybe there's a, a curse developing where the hosting team for the grand finals doesn't make it. The grand finals happened in New York last year. Will it happen to Philly this year? I mean, it's a large sample size. Oh yeah, it's a large I know, sample it's size. It's a huge sample size. And it's also but, so overwhelmingly statistically likely <laughs> to occur that out of 20 teams, the home it's, team will not make it. Isn't that a great stat? Yeah. And also, one of the who best. knows if we ever had it in a city that uh, doesn't even have an Overwatch League team, right? Neutral ground, something? of course. So yeah. always that possibility as well. Or the moon. Yeah, let's go to the moon. We could have it on the moon. 
Although outdoor esports events are, uh, they, can be, <laughs> they can be rough sometimes, but especially on the moon where there's no air. <laughs> That's a. Well, yeah. it's it would obviously be in Horizon Lunar Colony, but that place oh, yeah, has yeah. its own problems. So. Like not being built yet. Um, that we know of. And also, that's uh, true. Very was, dangerous animals escaping it there. It was like a top secret uh, facility, wasn't it? I, look, I don't know what the government is doing. That's all I'm going to say. That makes it sound like you do know what the government <laughs> is doing, though. I don't know. Good, good first map for the Atlanta rain here. Obviously, Dogman and crew uh, really taking it to the Toronto to find it. It was not even close. And that last team fight was crazy. Two ultimates canceled on the side of Toronto the Earth Shatter and the Sound Barrier. And uh, can't really ask for much more than that. Well, it's just so important that the Rain take the win here today because of their strength of schedule. They have had, out of any team in the Overwatch League in any stage, the toughest stage this stage. Yeah. So we definitely did not expect for them to do very well to start things off. But these are must wins now. They're good enough to be in our at least our play in in the top yeah, 12. For sure. So here we go for map number two. Volskaya Industries, our assault map, and we'll see if the Toronto Defiant have it in them to tie things up. Looks like it might be starting out with a bit of a hard point comp for Defiant on the defense. Mangachu on his famous Torbjorn, hammer kill extraordinaire. We'll see if he can get any today. <laughs> there have been victims of the Torb hammer in the Overwatch League in the past. Yeah, FRD still going to be in here, so no sign of Doc. Uh, they're just going to do some scouting here. Uh, they've been doing some interesting stuff with this roster. Yeah. And now the scouting here, obviously, from Baby Bay, is going to detect the bunker proposition. Logix, who had a great yeah. debut week on an individual level for the Toronto Defiant, playing that Widowmaker. Yeah. Yeah, really popped off on the Widowmaker, actually. So Curious to see what FRD. Okay, they're just going to go and play the D.Va. Erster, I was going to say, the Genji sometimes, but that's more against the uh, anti Bastion hardpoint. They're going to go double sniper here. All right. Yeah, pull him out with the Aresa, see if you can get a few headshots. Yeah, I was going to say, not? Dogman should probably switch to the Hog, and he does eventually. And that provides, obviously, the halt hook combo, so you can right. grab somebody easier, as well as more pressure onto the shield. Neko already playing that, though, so they will be trying the same thing. Oh. And there's a May wall. God's Hold on the May again. Got to go around. Ooh, low up members. God's a little bit low, but he's got that block in case he needs to survive here. Ooh, big shot on the Mangachu here. Gets away. His turret, not so lucky. He worked so hard on it, I've been told. Nice headshots on the Neko, and Urster down first, so Neko finds the pick. Gets the hook, and now it's a Widow battle, and Baby Bay on the losing end. It's not Bren over there now. <laughs> you gotta take it a bit more seriously. <laughs> Ooh, that's so clever. Great Look Maywall. at that. Yeah. Able to put down the Maywall to stop the Hulk hook combo from coming in. So yep. additional weapon. Obviously, we rarely see this. I can't recall seeing this composition used actively at any point in Overwatch's history. So Defiant coming out with some fun stuff today. Yeah, pretty sick. Oh, and another hit hook comes in, but Neko dies along the way. Baby Bay down eight, able to get there with the res behind the Maywall. And now God's charging forward here. They've got the slow. They've got Dogman. Neko comes back with another hook of his own so the, pro the problem here so i mean the problem here the defiant have figured out a composition so if their barrier goes down from the orisa if they lose the barrier battle they just put the wall up if you try and get a hook in there they put the wall up if you walk through a choke they put the wall up yeah so it's very difficult because you're not playing high mobility here as you continue to play that roadhog i think atlanta rain has to switch off the roadhog here into this comp because they're just going to win the hook war basically every time because of the Maywall. They should. They've got that res too, which makes a big difference that you can do by the Maywall. Easier to get off than the res on the other side. The Dragon Strike going through. FRD loses the mech. Supercharger down as well. There's a Blizzard. Defiant striking back. Masa and Dogman already out. So this attack has been stuffed. Poke Poke down again. And there's the Ice Block to keep gods alive. No problem there. Yep, cool little wall to walk away. Aid though, not going down. Baby Bay strikes a, a pretty serious blow before exiting. He's not gonna get out. Yeah. But I wonder, I wonder if that stagger on the aid now might be enough. I mean, that is huge, right? You have yeah. to rely on the health packs right now in order to really keep yourself up. So that, that was an excellent trade by Baby Bay. Uh, aggressive like Dogman, this is smart. Going over to the Moira yep. right now. Yep. And we do see the swap as well from Urster. So they're going for just a standard 3-3 composition. 
You know, don't have very much time left to execute this, but without that Zarya there, they're gonna have, or excuse me, without the, the Mercy there, Mercy now back. Well, yeah, they took so long in they setting did. up against she got back. They had a chance, I think. Well, Baby may know how the Logics finishes him off Mangachu with the Molten Car. And it's tough to step on that. Oh, the charge takes Neko off the edge. Popo just deciding to end it right here with 30 seconds, although he's got to get back. There's going to be one more desperation fight, maybe. Depends on the stagger here. The stagger on FRD. Oh, this is going to be brutal. Not as bad as it could have been, but still pretty rough. There is a time, though, for one more push. Remember, several yeah. members of the Defiant have died. They are on their way back. So coming back right now with the Roadhog and the Bay. And they'll get there, it looks like, just barely. Atlanta Rain, gonna wait for all six members. They saved the self-destruct, it's the only two available. Urser switched yeah, over to Tracer. That's right, Pokepo, are they gonna go into the Coalescence? I like this, that lets Pokepo push forward here. Gives him a bit more time on the point. Logic's looking for another shot here, drops down. Can they find one? Meanwhile, God's on the May, out in the middle, and drops a Blizzard on the point right now. He's half health, but he's okay. Kills coming in for Logic's and Mangachu, and they full hold. What a start on Volskaya. Man, the hometown crowd buff is real. I love this composition because it looks like a bunker comp from the Defiant. So if you try and play anti-bunker into it, it actually is better against anti-bunker. That is yeah. very creative from the Defiant. It's sick. We'll see what Atlanta Rain can do on attack when we come back. Coca-Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League. Well, uh, the Defiant were the ones who received the brisk reception from the home crowd. It was the Atlanta Rain who were uh, held to a standstill on the map of Volskaya Industries. Now, theoretically, Atlanta can yeah. still win this second map, but it is looking unlikely. Their attack was, I'll say it, anemic. You see the guys in the Defiant, they're laughing, having a good time up there. It's Logic's really popped off with the Widowmaker. I mean, in the Widowmaker battle against Baby Bay, Logic's definitely got the better of that. I mean, 10 of limbs, six final blows, did not die in the first half. Man on your screen, Baby Bay, will be called to account now. He'll have to answer the threat of Logic's. <laughs> a little bit different than going against Brent. Yes. <laughs> Let's hope he didn't use up all his star power <laughs> this morning. That would be a disappointing thing. So, you know what, interesting thing with uh, Atlanta is that, you know, you have some really, like, like I feel like Dogman and Baby Bay both go off of, like, emotion, right? They're really, like, emotional players that they can get so, like, high up in the room, like, in terms of, like, the crowd's going crazy, they're going crazy on the stage. That, like, you know, now you lose in that first round. You gotta somehow bring it back. You gotta gain a little bit of momentum here. Even if you lose this map in the second half, you see at the top of your screen where the A is, that little golden tick, that's where Toronto needs to get to to win this map. They don't even need to get all of point A. Yeah, just 68.5% of the capture progress. So the Defiant send Yakpung on the wrecking ball uh, with that extra mobility forward to scout. Now they know what kind of composition they're dealing with. What kind of heroes they got to be so in. careful though. I mean, one elimination here from oh, Logics, yeah. and you see he lands a headshot there. Magachu will start to approach here, and the rain of force to fight in the shade for the most part. One pick off oh, here, it's all it takes. They've lost Popo, their main tank, the anchor of the team is down. In the Atlanta Rain, they don't have any heroes that can bring him back, so they have to go with five players for now. Like trap too. Logix gets to play from this high ground, shots into the shield of Erster as he's trying to help the players go to the bunker, but Mangachu shuts it down. It's two with the barrage here in the Toronto to find a rolling on up and rolling on through. And there's not much resistance left here for the rain. They try and send the wrecking ball forward. Massa also valiantly attempted to keep this one alive, but it is lost to them. And we have a tied series here going into the half.
That one was quick in favor of the Defiant. See Mangachun fired up yelling across the stage. Let's get it! Now, map number one was really rough for them, but I think Atlanta rode the momentum of the crowd. The Defiant make the crowd go quiet there in map number two as they take it in commanding fashion. They get the full hold. We'll be back with halftime right after this. The Overwatch League is brought to you by Bud Light, the official beer of the Overwatch League. Welcome back to halftime, guys. That's right, as it was in times of old, Doe and Monty are doing the <laughs> halftime at an eSports match. We used to do this, like, pretty much every day every, in every match. Every day in back, every match. You know, before we did the Overwatch League, we casted every match, every game of an entire league, and did all the halftimes, and the post-shows, and the pre-shows. It was just basically the Monty Doe show. You're, you're in great hands. Don't worry. That's right. Don't worry. We're old pros at this. We're fine. And on the plus side, you also don't get to see Bren's nipples, which I consider a bonus. <laughs> so. that, that is true. You know, <laughs> think of the children. <laughs> Right, well, on that note, it's all over <laughs> social media if you want to find it. It's out there, man. I'm saying. Well, on that note, we've got some highlights from the first two maps we'd love to show you at some point in this segment. But for now, let's talk about the highlights. Let's guess. Can you predict what highlights we'll see? Let's play a oh. game here, because we're going to wait for the highlights. Let's, so predict it. What's the first highlight you would put in a reel? Uh, I think Come that the, the double uh, the double ult cancel. That would be my at number the one. End of university that Atlanta had. Also, some of those cool May walls that we had on Volskaya. Yep, denying from, hooks from and things. Around to Defiant, like did not, you know, taking place of the Orisa barrier when it was getting low, or denying hooks, or or halts, or those kind of plays. Logics with some big headshots. He, he ended Volskaya Industries with 54% scoped uh, crit accuracy, which is a ludicrous number to have. That's pretty good. Yeah. And that's of all. To be fair, that statistic is of all shots he hit. So of sure. all shots that he hit, 54% were headshots, which still. is still amazing. Still, that's, that's an incredible stat, yeah. He's, Perhaps less incredible than all shots overall, but still, you know. Mr. Logix is still pretty good at hit scan and Overwatch, it wow. turns out. He has not atrophied in contenders. Oh, no. Has made a, a strong debut, I think, coming, re-debut. They're definitely thanking Mr. Logix in the uh, the team room right now, that's for sure. And we're all tied up. It is, uh, it is one and one. So, you know, what do you think about going forward with this series? 
Well, I think it's hard to predict because we've seen two very one-sided maps so far. Uh, Atlanta really came in and outplayed the Toronto Defiant in the in that first map on control. Yeah. But they didn't adapt very well or quickly coming into the second map. And I think they really played into the hands of the Toronto Defiant that wanted them to play an anti-bunker composition, which that may well just punishes your mobility so much. It's so brilliant when you think about it. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, you could see Atlanta was just completely flabbergasted by it. It's that they, they just kept trying the same thing over again. They're like, well, this this composition worked. It should work in this situation. But then this Maywall keeps appearing. But yeah, you know, what do you do? I mean, on the fly, like, how do you play around that? It's it's tough. I think you just, you have to go for a multi-DPS look and you have to play with strong flankers at that yeah. point in time. So it's, I think it's difficult to, sort of make those adjustments as quickly as you need to. And we've seen this before. Look at how the Dallas Fuel played those crazy compositions, Junk Rap Widow attacks yeah. against the NYXL. And that took NYXL, one of the best teams in this league, and I would say the best team at adapting in-game in this league, took them all the way to map five. So that element of surprise is incredibly valuable. Right. And Atlanta Rain is just not, I think, as good of a team and you're also punishing them when it comes to that in-game communication i know coming into this match that i said that you know that movement to to a mixed language roster is e easier than in overwatch than it is in many other games mm -hmm. but when you have to make these really interesting strategic moves on the fly that's where you can run into some trouble right and if you think about what really kind of like beats that comp you almost have to go back to like quad dps or even like dive that we used to yeah. see to like get over the wall get onto those snipers let's take a look at logic's uh widowmaker stats again now uh now what's interesting here is it says 36 percent but i saw we both saw the card at the end of that map in the game and it said 54 so i don't know I mean, 36 believe what is you want. He's still a, he's still insane. 36 is still an extremely high number. Yeah. Uh, coming in and yeah, it was a pretty brief time of playing Widowmaker, considering that we only we never even got past point A on this map. Sure. But still got the critical pickoffs when it mattered. Zero deaths, but you know he was never really under much pressure. Honestly, I mean you had the Widow on the other side, but you know Baby Bay uh, tried it on the uh, Zarya a little bit too, and that didn't work out. So what do you do? Well, switching to three three that late in the game. Yeah. Again. That, that composition is just going to be extremely difficult. Sure. So, you know, as we go on to Eichenwald, which is our next map, this is going to be a time where we might see that Maystrat again, realistically. You could run it on point you, A as a defender, yeah. You definitely can run it on point A as a defender. Yeah. That would be banking on the fact that the Atlanta Rain coaching staff is not making adjustments at halftime in order to defeat that or providing their players some advice on how to play into that particular strategy. But if I'm my my, my attitude, Doa, is always if it ain't broke, don't fix it. If you're Toronto, totally, yeah. if you're Toronto Defiant and you just smack them around on Volskaya and you have a chance to do that again, make them work to figure out how to deal with it and don't abandon it early. Right, because if you're the coaches, suddenly you may even need to like think of a new roster or else like how do you work with the people that you've already planned to put in yep. to decide who plays what DPS. It's like it's a really difficult position actually for Atlanta Rain to be in. So I'm really curious to see, first of all, if Toronto does it again, which they probably should, it worked really well. And if they do, can Atlanta Rain do anything to sort of respond to it? Yeah, and also we saw FRD in, which is a bit unusual considering yeah. that I would consider Daco to be Atlanta Rain's best player. So, I mean, we'll see what kind of, we'll see what kind of... Uh... Hello. Hello. Thank you to our wonderful <laughs> wardrobe person who keeps us looking fantastic. You gotta adjust that bolo tie sometimes. You know, it gets out of whack once in a while. Shout out well, to you, Haley. I'm looking, that's great. right. Haley's awesome. Yep, she ran away looking mortified, but don't worry. She's awesome. She, if she had a Twitter, I'd shout it out. She's wise not to have one. Nobody should be on there if they don't need to be. But uh, looking at the roster, too, I'm looking over the screen right now. It looks like FRD is still in there for now. So might not actually be switching him out, which would be kind of interesting. Yeah, and I, I don't think, obviously, he performed very well on that first map. The entirety of the Atlanta Reign did. So yeah. you know you kind of got beaten strategically rather than in terms of it's, it's sort of a hopeless matchup with the players that you have, considering right. how one-sided your win was in the first place yeah. uh, on that first map. So I think you can keep it in there and, and see how things work. Sure, I mean, especially if you did have like a set plan for Eichenwald already, like you don't want to take that previous map and like let that make you uh, change things on the fly too much. Like you kind of have to balance, like do we need to adjust? Do we need to stick to the game plan? Yeah, and I, I think 
it really mattered too in that last match that we saw the Toronto Defiant defending first because right. that opened up the strategy that they used on their attack when you know that you can you only need a little bit of that point and also it makes it so difficult to defend if you're the Atlanta Reign because they right. had to run the Winston 3-3 without the Moira because you can't just go with you know a normal support in that situation right because if they run if they if they then they run multi dps you have a problem and if you run with the moira then you're going to be get run over by reinhardt 3 3. so you kind of have to split the difference and hope your strategy is just going to work because it just you you do have that blind attack coming in with the compositions yeah pretty much so crazy series already so far one and one both of these teams looking for their very first win here in stage three i think this one could go the dip distance based on what we've seen already like we saw a very one-sided oasis very one-sided volskaya i mean i really have no idea what to expect for these other maps now that the teams are pulling in kind of crazy uh, strats but if anything i mean it's gonna be fun and it's always fun to have a huge crowd right behind you as well the energy's crazy <laughs> Yeah, I love these home stands. Both Dallas and Atlanta have been such a pleasure to attend yeah. in terms of the fans. And I think it really does add a lot to have this atmosphere, especially backing up the home team. And hopefully they can back that up. So we take a look right. here. We're currently tied one to one in our third match of the day. Coming up will be the Guangzhou Charge versus the Shanghai Dragons. You know, you, you'd imagine the Dragons should be able to take that one. But uh, Charge, I, I'm going to keep saying it. This is a team with a lot of individual talent and someday they're gonna figure out how to actually make it work together. And when they do, they're gonna start beating a ton of people. We're gonna take a quick break. And when we come back, map number three, we'll see you then. They don't just play for a team. They play for every fan, every rival, every moment, every match. And when everyone watching expects the best, they perform with the best. Welcome back, everybody, to the Atlanta, Georgia homestand weekend. That's right. And there he is, the villain of this match. According to the home crowd anywhere, Gods <laughs> really uh, leading the way with his team to uh, take Volskaya. He's such a personality, Doha. He loves this. He, he loves, loves the he booze. He loves the booze. Yeah, he yeah. was telling us how much he was excited for it. So yeah, definitely yeah. not getting to him at all. He was milking it during that walkout for oh, sure. We, and we, uh, we saw him yesterday when we were doing walkthroughs and stuff, and he was, he was pretty psyched about today. So <laughs> I'm sure he's enjoying it. <laughs> I mean, any man who, you know, brings that stuffed cat and slowly turns around on a chair, and, you know, you know he loves playing the villain. Yeah, he's he's one of the, the most fun personalities I think we have. And Absolutely. You know, people forget that he did used to be a DPS player yeah. and before he switched over to that flex tank role. So he brings a very deep hero pool, and we saw some of that with the May. Yep, you know the next step? 
to uh, tattoo Voldemort on the back of your head. Oh, nice. So you can look That's like a the bold dude play. from the first book. That's right, yeah. I, I would just go with wearing a <laughs> turban, because turbans are the best. Yeah, well, why not both? You can do both. <laughs> okay, no los dos. You can do both. Dorado will be our final map, but the first, before that, we got to go to Eichenwald. That's right. If, if I made, hybrid map. If I made a fashionable metropolitan turban called the <laughs> Urban Turban, would you, would you wear it, though? Dude, I think there's probably, there's plenty of people already rocking fashionable urban turbans right now. I mean, I was, I was just in Morocco, and I wore a turban the whole time, and it was the best. I'm sure you did. It's the best piece of headwear, <laughs> hands down. It seems very comfortable. I've not worn one myself, but when I was in grade school, I had a Ninja Turtles baseball cap. I'm going to sell you Does my first urban turban. Sweet. I'll be your first customer. <laughs> and Echo looking for a shot. He's going to go ahead and swap around. Looks like Defiant rolling out with the pharmacy. That's right. They're going with the uh, triple DPS. Nope. Deciding to change it up. Okay. Yeah, they're going with the uh, double snipe. Or look, we'll see. They, they're looking right now at Urster on the Batiste. So yeah. Amanda Rain taking that page out of the Shocks book. Oh, not swapping. And trying to play that. They are not going to swap. So taking a shot here. Mangachu already at 40% of the way towards that barrage. Nice Bilso's. bio grenade as well onto Dogman and Urster. No kidding, but I mean, Mangachu fills those barrages so fast. He's so accurate with these rockets. It's really crazy. Uh, he is a Farah and Torbjorn specialist historically. Yeah, that's right. Go ahead and take out the lamp there, as one the of, pro players call it. One of those two heroes is more useful <laughs> in uh, pro play generally. Mangachu, he's, he's got the barrage right now. Basically, 98%. Dogman down. Good start for Toronto. They've got the 65 and they've got... Ooh, that was a, that was a tempting moment. But with FRD right there, yeah, you got to try to at least de the Diva. Get rid of the Immortality Field. Does just that. Lands the Rockets on the Ursa. Ooh, clever to try the Fire Strike through the Amp Matrix. He gave it a shot, but it was a little bit too late. And that's going to be point A taken by Toronto. Yeah, you can see him trying to get that shot. But yeah. nice boost by Mangachu. He knew when the Diva and the Immortality Field were there. That is not the time to go for the Barrage. Takes another jump up with his rockets and then targets the Immortality Field, followed by the Barrage. So clean attack here from the Toronto Defiant, waiting to pick off that support in Dogman early on. And here yep. we go, Dragon Strike coming through. The Strike of the Dragon, but it doesn't really find any victims. Godzo finds one with the name of Baby Bay. Another 6v5 for Toronto to try to break through this choke here, which would be big. Aid with the ultimate. Trying to keep everybody healed, do a little bit of extra damage here on Lana Rain, holding the door for now, and with a kill on the gods, they might be doing okay, but they've lost Dogman now. Logics winning the Battle of Picks. And for now, Atlanta Rain holding that joke. I mean, they're getting elimination still up, but they're not getting any cart movement. That's the problem when you're trying to play with all this cover. Yeah. And the fact that these high HP targets can cycle onto the cart one by one in this choke on the defense. Pretty much. So Dogman's back now on the Ana. EMP available for the Defiant. Well, they've got a lot of tools right now. Everybody but uh, Logics and Aid having their ultimates right now. Hack on the FRD. He has to walk away. Leaves up some openings. There's a minefield. They really just want to move. Ooh, sleep dart on the Pokepo. Damage certified and delivered. Pokepo down. There goes Dogman as well. The Dragon Strike claims Masa. Maybe an FRD come back with a couple themselves, but it's enough for Toronto to get the payload through the doors and moving. And Mangachu with as the... As long as they stay on it. <laughs> as long as they there stay on it. There we go, yeah. Mangachu with the nano boost in the brush. It saves them from having to use the EMP from Gods. So that's a tool that they have left over for this next fight. Still have right. to be careful, though. Graviton Surge is available for Baby Bay. They do not currently have a D.Va in order to get the defense matrix off. Oh, here we go. EMP hits a lot of members of Atlanta, but it does not hit Masa. He gets the sound barrier off, gets the shields on those teams, and that's going to deliver Atlanta Reign. The team fight, Neko down as well as Logix, and they are going to stop the payload right there. You don't see the payload stopped in that spot too often. No, you don't, but they can't get value. Like you say, Masa was hiding, able yeah. to get the sound barrier off at the perfect time to prevent any deaths. Not only that, Atlanta Rain, they hold on to the Graviton Surge. So now the swaps. Yeah, swapping over to the Diva, so they do have a tool to deny Oh, goodbye, Mangachu. Surge, and yeah, that's going to hurt Mangachu again. He can't yeah. lose. Purple, Bionic Grenade, and yep. they're just going to all in. Uh, that's right. Just going to be the uh, primal rage from Pokemon to chase Toronto down that hallway. Logic's about to drop. Yarkpong in trouble as well. And the trouble for Toronto now is that they're going to have to take even more time to rebuild that ultimate economy. 
Yeah, absolutely. Instant pickoff gods. You can't get staggered. So will Mangachu on the Brigitte. And now the spawn camping is beginning. Yep. Atlanta Ring, conservative. Because that biotic grenade hit Mangachu, and they just all limbed him, all they had to use really was the primal rage. Yeah. So they're going to be able to be feeling great. Well, I mean, when Toronto got hit by that, they ran into the narrow hallway. That's a primal rage playground right now. Boko has a nano boost on it, building towards another primal rage really fast. Sleep Dark connects, but he gets woke up right away, and there goes Aid. Everybody but he dropping on the side of Toronto. And again, they didn't need to use that much. They used the grab, they used the nano boost. There's a charge, bringing back Popo to the spawn. He leaps out and they keep him alive. Wow, that was close, man. I thought Popo was dead for sure. And they're cycling those ultimates. Here's the Primal uh -oh. Rage. They nano boosted him to get these knockoffs. Can they do it? Uh, he doesn't quite have the right angle yet. Maybe he can find another. So oh, he Aid. knocks a line into his team. That's good enough. Aid, though, gets the boop on the FRD. But it doesn't matter. Toronto Defiant coming in to finish it off. And that payload is going to start moving again. As soon as Aid gets the environmental kill onto the D.Va, the Graviton Surge instantly becomes useful. Right. No defense matrix there from FRD to block it, so they go ahead, fire it out, get the team kill, and at least get some move, move, movement on the payload. Yep. We are going to be in very close territory here. It goes under the bridge. It does, but that's the chance for Atlanta Rain to jump down onto a baby bay, trying to build up to that grab as fast as he can. There it is. Yeah, I got it right now. Nano He's going to use it. Uh, he uses it, but here comes the self-destruct. Sound bearer comes in. Oh. Atlanta Rain as well. Nice. Stun on the Popo. FRD, no kills from that self-destruct. The charge came through slightly late. Popo down now. And Toronto Defiant, maybe with a chance to push forward. Baby Bay, though, gets the kill on the gods. So it's blow for blow right now between these two teams. Yak Pong in a lot of trouble. Sub 100 health, and he's going to get knocked off. Oh, he lives! He falls down to the tiny platform, and his team keeps pushing the payload. In the meantime, what a crazy round. And Baby Bay, can he escape? He's going to get through the door just barely, so he retains some of the Zarya charge, and that means he's not going to get staggered. So Toronto Defiant pulling it out. Logic still with that Graviton Surge. Masa going to be checking positioning I mean, from that top window. Here we go. All right, grab on the doorway to try to deliver the point B, and they will not get it quite yet. As FRD jumped on with the D.Va, it's going to give him the chance to advance. they got to keep Poke Poe alive, though. Hammer time comes in, Poke Poe down. It was a good shatter from Yakpong to just set up the finish to this fight. And Atlanta Reign not going to be able to stop the payload here. Yeah, another minute 29, yep. minute 30, put on the clock here for the Defiant. But they had to use everything, Noah. Yeah. So they may have a bit of a difficulty right now coming back into this and pushing all the way to the end. Atlanta Rain going to come online with five out of their six ultimates only really lacking the rally. And if Atlanta plays their ult economy right, it's going to be very difficult for the Defiant to come back and actually end this map. All right, grab used. And that's going to eliminate the Toronto Defiant pretty quick here. They're going to have one more fight, probably maybe two if they scramble, but these staggers could get bad. Probably one more good fight for the Toronto Defiant. Luckily for them, they're going to have at least a sound barrier anyway. <laughs> the crowd loving the tactical crouching here. Hey, you got to do it. From Masa, you got to do, do it. it. You got to do, right. do it to him at home. So self-destruct can be used on this bridge to delay the advance. So can the, the uh, Earth Shatter. So they're going to try and come around this side instead. Self-destruct should be used immediately, in my opinion. Yeah. I push them back. I agree. You got to engage. Go ahead and engage with it. I mean, both teams are probably going to use it, honestly. Toronto trying to sneak their way in here. They're going to not even cross the bridge, going through the castle instead. Popo looking for that fat earth shatter. Atlanta Rain has all the tools right now. They just need to seal the deal. One more team fight for the home team. As he engages the self-destruct, God's getting in there too. And he kills coming in. There's a grab for Toronto. No kills out of either self-destruct. And now the sound barrier is starting to wear away. Another shatter! A shatter from Yakpong. Dog man down already. Masa used the, the uh, uh, sound barrier, but it wasn't enough. Logic's down. Popo falls as well. The grab sets him up. 
and Mangachu gets two, but I don't know, man. It's so close here. But at the end, Toronto has just a few more people on the card. The thing is, the respawn advantage is going to go to Atlanta right now. But FRG dies so late, Doa, that now Toronto Defiant might be able to push through. Maybe. Gods with another self-destruct available. That Graviton, maybe they might have wanted to hold that for the next engagement. Rally still there, though, on oh, the side of the over. rain. A uh, Popo with the Shatter, it's gonna need to be huge. Gonna go for it, oh, he gets a Shatter on the Gods. A few people taking advantage of with that one. Now Gods the counter shatter. Up, up the self-destruction, that's right. The counter Earth Shatter comes through from Yakpa yet again. Transcendence, maybe enough to keep people alive. Another self-destruct from FRD. Logix has a shield in time, and they are gonna just grab everybody at Atlanta Rain that's left, and they've got the sound barrier too. Another one for aid at the end of this insane round. The respawn's coming in. Oh no, Yak Pung is down, and Baby Bay has another grab. If he can get the kills, he can be the hero, but he can't, and Defiant. Finish it against all odds. Yakpung had to have massive shatters for the Toronto Defiant. His counter shatter is absolutely exquisite. And Where that's what gets them guy? there. Yakpung, you know, we saw Sherrick come in. It's all Yakpung now. Wow. Switch rounds when we come back. Coca Cola is the official refreshment of the Overwatch League. Despite all odds, Gods in the Toronto Defiant getting the attack done. That was one of the craziest ends around I've seen in a long time, man. Uh, it, what uh, a great series. Gods against the odds, I guess you could <laughs> say, but no kidding. Yakpung really showing up, but the rest of the team delivering as well. Toronto Defiant coming to play today. And if you're a Defiant fan, you should be ecstatic that they finished this map. Sure, yeah. it was in overtime, so they might not get another attack round, but given how strong their defense was on A of Volskaya, Finishing the map is, I think, a huge gauntlet that they've thrown down. You know, also just having your players have the ability to step up and be clutch when the moment needs it, you know? I mean, that's something that a team like Toronto has kind of been lacking too this season. And so seeing Yak Pung, who, you know, uh, you know, to be fair, was one of the worst tanks we've had in the league for a long time. And finally, you know, hitting those shatters, really playing together with his team a lot better. Toronto's turning it around. Yeah, I, I definitely am impressed, and they always have Sherrick to go back to if they need it. Yeah. So they're not going to use the May this time. They're taking a more conservative approach with a Sombra. They also will have that Roadhog and Mangachu yeah. on his specially special Farah. Obviously, Atlanta Rain going to make some just changes here. Baby Bay 
will be running the pit. They are going to go for Zarya, so Moira. No, uh, no Widow this time for Logix either. Yeah, 3-3 three, three with the Moira. This is a Be good different. strategy once they see the fact that there is no May. Yeah. So they can't get separated, really. So it's about a slow approach undercover, and they're going to speed boost across the open ground. How does Mangachu already have half a barrage? Like, this guy's insane. He never misses rockets. <laughs> He knows the angles, you gotta say, to get over the top of that Reinhardt shield. Plays around the Zarya bubbles well. Yep. Knows they're coming to the high ground there. Yep. It's another one. So drop down here onto the point. Yep, that's right. Trying to just rush on. Take that defensive position in the side of the room here. Megachu trying to keep the people away from his team. Keep Atlanta at bay. Chasing people around the corner right now. And meanwhile, oh, Mercy Trouble oh. Aid in a lot of trouble, but they trade for Dogman support for support, but not having that res, not having that damage boost on the far end. Not having, it's going to be a problem. Not having any healing. And no, no healing aside from Rodog healing himself. Desperation comes out with the barrage, and it gets two from Mangachu. Logic's coming out as well. He even d mech FRD. Mangachu and the rest of Defiant really coming wow. up much, saving the defense in time for Aid to get back. It really is ridiculous how clutch this Defiant team has been. Mangachu yeah. coming up with that barrage. They are clicking quickly here with this new roster. That's insane. Yet again, winning a fight they had no business winning. Atlanta Rain coming back in now with the grab. We'll see what they can do with it. There we go. All right, grab. From front side, no. Yeah, they're not going to use it. They're trying to catch up somebody. Right, baby, baby, I'm not sure this is the the solo mission you want to go on. Yeah, I don't think so. Play the point. Uh, Neko down as well. Atlanta Rain with an opportunity here. That big body out of the way might be the ticket. Baby Bay walking forward, trying to take out Yaquan. He's doing so much damage right now. Yaquan gonna go down, and now Atlanta Rain. I don't know if the barrage, well, maybe it will. He gets another three if you include the Diva Mech with that barrage. But it's all the big bodies from Atlanta Rain on the point right now, and that's probably gonna be all they need. Yeah, he's gonna yep. use the grab while Gods is rebacking. Yep. That'll be it. And so Atlanta Rain able to get the payload going. Yeah, still a decent stall out right now. He's going to throw out the whole hog. Yeah. Because they will be switching off this composition. So now Atlanta Rain heading back in. Lots of ults to use. Coalescence yep. and Graviton, all they needed in order to take that point. And that's how you have to play it. You're fighting the ground war. You need to ignore Mangachu and rush onto a target as six players. So Atlanta Rain able to make that play work. Now they've taken over the high ground here on the castle. I mean, with the the big swap that Toronto Defiant did, they're gonna need to have a big EMP. Get a little bit of time to build some ultimates again. Let's see if Logix can deliver just that. There it is, EMP hits a lot of people, but not the sound barrier. Masa gets it off in time, and there's a kill on the Neko. It doesn't look like Atlanta's gonna be slowed down much here. Yeah, Masa has been on point when it comes to answering EMPs. There's a very narrow window because you have to deal with the Lucio animation yeah. of the sound barrier. So the faster you get it on, the better it goes, and the less time they have to take advantage of that EMP. Masa has been very good in that timing today. Right. Atlanta Rain making really, really strong progress here. And Trout to Defiant finishing with no time on the clock. If Atlanta Rain finishes, they basically got this map locked down. It's really easy to finish it from that situation. Yeah, it is. They will have to attack again, so they yeah. force the draw, but they're still powering through, and that Graviton's gonna help. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, Kong. The icing on the cake of the FRD self-destruct, and that's going to be a very quick point B for Atlanta Rain. Yeah, they're going to have so much time on C, actually. Yeah, they're going to have about 250. Uh, 340. 350, sorry. Ha! Your math is terrible. <laughs> 90 seconds at yourself. it. You don't have great math skills like me. <laughs> I know. I'm jealous sometimes. <laughs> uh, you should be. Atlanta Rain. With a time bank that Toronto's definitely jealous of, that's for sure. 330 still on the clock as they push forward here. Toronto getting a few ultimates up again, but it's looking a little bit grim, isn't it? Yeah, still ball efficient so far for the Atlanta Rain. Yakbun gonna get the nano boost right now. Logix comes Whoa, with the EMP. Six man EMP, and you gotta win this fight at this point. You gotta win it, you gotta stabilize, and they're going to. Popo down, nice sleep dart. They're on the baby bay as well to set that one up. <laughs> Charge from Yakbun to finish him. Three minutes to go for Atlanta Rain, but finally Toronto at least get a little bit of stability. Yeah, they do, but Atlanta's coming up on so many ults themselves. No shadow for Popo, but ult's gonna be up for many other players on the Atlanta Rain. Masa, Erster, Dogman, and Baby Bay. So a chance to play aggressively here. They have to watch out for gods. 
having that graviton surge as well, but maybe they will get his up quickly. Yep. Atlanta, going side, FRD taking a nap. How do you put Diva's mech to sleep? That's a, <laughs> that's a real question. How do you put Zenyatta to sleep, Noah? I don't know. Or maybe Risa. He was built with sleep circuits. Who knows? Oh, all right, grab. Sombear for Moss again to keep everybody up, but hey, grab for Sombear. Oh. Whatever sleep dart on the Pupfo. Are they going to get aggressive nano. here? Yeah. During the nano boost, too. That is huge. Oh, and the shadow that Yachtpong just walks up and gets it at the end. Sound barrier, though. EMP now on Atlanta Rain. Is this another one fight for Toronto with Popo down? It's starting to look that way. Baby Bay trying to get aggressive here, and they do get Mangachu. They have a chance to push back in here. Oh, they might have gotten Yachtpong. He was moved really far forward, but the Nano Boost saves him. Wow, crazy. FRD slept again, though. And now Yachtpong with the Nano Boost gets a few swings in before backing away. And he's like one good fire strike away from having that Earth Shatter again. Zephyr played that so well, using the Nano Boost to keep Yachtpong alive after he was double booped into the Atlanta Rain formation. Ah, Poco Nano Boost walking in. Yachtpong and A already down. And look at that. All Poco needs to do is walk forward with Urster and Baby Bay, and they crush the team. They are so close to finishing this. But Atlanta Rain, they need to finish with a minute left to not give Defiance another attack. Can they do it? Oh, Yachtpong down. That's a good start. And there goes eight again. The Stegen respawns. To get rid of the immortality field, it's a grab from Gods. It's not going to matter, though. Gods staying alive for longer than you would think he would. Finally goes no. down, though. And did they get it done with a minute left? A minute five. A minute and five seconds means that it will just be Atlanta with the attack to try to finish the map. I mean, it's not much, but it does prevent the Defiant from having a chance to win. Yeah. So best case scenario for the Defiant now is going to be a draw in Eichenwald, and they have proven that they are formidable defenders. Yeah, and with not needing to defend for that long, honestly, we could really see a map four that will decide the end of this match. A very the winner. Yeah, very crazy here at the end. And Atlanta Rain, they're, you know, they don't even have much time to scout the enemy composition and react to it. They're gonna yeah. have basically, if they if they go blind with the comp, they'll have two fights. If they scout, they'll have one. Pretty so much. What do you do in this scenario? This is where Defiant has to look at their roster and say, what is a bird to a gods? Yeah, and I love what the Defiant are doing right now. So they're running just a standard Ryan 3-3, and the yeah. reason is, is that this is most vulnerable to multi-DPS, but the poke that it takes for multi-DPS compositions is going to take longer than a minute to push them off the point. Yep, that's right. So they know that Atlanta, if they run multi-DPS, is going to have to, at some point, Fight them on the objective, which is exactly what they want. I love it. This they, is Zavian strategies have been on point today. They really need to find a pick too. Baby Bay. Maybe using that Sonic Arrow, not gonna change it. Popo. -po. Alright, we'll see if they decide to swap things up. Uh, not quite yet. Maybe. Popo on the wrecking ball. Just doing the damage that he can. Trying to get the minefield out there. All they need is a one tick Toronto to find, giving them a little bit of time actually. Oh boy, they're going back in at the very end. Whoa, and now Gods teammates immediately. What in the world? A strange backtrack and reattack from Defiant, and they are big trouble. That said, though, the damage, the damage coming in. I don't know if it's going to be enough, though. Gods had to go Defiant. on the point. It's only one tick, so somebody had to stand there and yeah. contest the wrecking ball. Uh, Mangachu really close, really close. He's got it now. He's got the Ant Matrix. Gonna go ahead and use that damage. The sound, ooh, the Dragon Strike coming through it though. Right through the Ant Matrix. Mangachu taken up by Earth Ring. Couldn't weather the storm. And Atlanta Rain have found the fight they need to take the lead in this series. Just the cleanup is all it's gonna take. Disco Fever from Neko on the payload, but as soon as the transcendence is done, that's it. And Atlanta Rain will take Eichenwald. Atlanta had one shot to win that map with that composition. Yep. They played a dangerous game that was reliant on their DPS execution, and boy, do they pull it off. Uh, dogmatic static, and who wouldn't be, man? Close match regardless. Toronto Defiant making them play to the edge, and... I think we could definitely see a map five out of this. We'll find out when we check out map four when we come back. The Overwatch League is powered by Intel. Game, record, stream without compromise on Intel Core i7. And by Omen by HP, the official PC and display of the Overwatch League.
Welcome back, guys. Absolutely sick series today between the Toronto Fire and Atlanta Rain. Toronto really coming with an incredible game plan, great strategy, generally very good execution, but Rain has been able to just barely eke out a lead with a win on Eichenwald. It's fun to see both of these teams fighting so hard to make it into the play-ins. Yeah. This match, we've stressed it before, it is so important. They are both at 7-12 and 12 right now. They both need to make moves if they want to even have a shot at the end of the season. And both of these teams coming alive at seemingly the right time. Toronto Defiant looking surprisingly put together after yeah. their new roster additions. This lineup has gelled quickly. Right, and over on the Atlanta Rain side, everything kind of firing as far as like picks and big plays go from uh, players like Baby Bay, Pogpo as well. And when you think about it, these are both two teams that have not experienced a win yet in stage three. So even though, yeah, the play-ins are important, of course, and that's the main story here, on a smaller level, you just want to get a win. You just want to know what that feels like again, right? Atlanta Rain on the verge of doing it in front of the home crowd in like, from the Atlanta Rain player perspective, it's almost unimaginable to go 0-7 and have those last two matches be in front of your own Ooh. fans Ooh. in Atlanta. So if they, <laughs> you know nobody is as desperate for a win as Atlanta Rain are right now. Yeah, and uh, you can definitely feel it too. There are 3,000 people here yeah. in Atlanta cheering them on. So obviously the team wants to deliver that victory, their first ever game in front of their home audience. Yep, of course. Pokepo and Daco, a great duo, but uh, broken up a little bit here by Atlanta Rain today as they are sticking with FRD for our fourth map even. I mean, it's worked out. I, you have to it say, has. they're up in this series. They pulled off a emergency one minute time bank, which you would rarely see work on attack. Yep. I think both teams played that last point very well, like the strategy that we saw from the Toronto Defiant. And here is our maps. Well, as we mentioned, it was uh, a 2-1 right now. Actually, Volskaya taken by Toronto. Dorado will be our perhaps final map if the Atlanta Reign can win it. If they can't, we're going to map five. Taking a look at this again, Toronto Defiant. This is what we've seen from them. Yeah. It's either Gods or Logics playing the Sombra. Mangachu going back either to the Torbjorn or the Fara has played Brigida too. So Toronto Defiant has mixed it up and played standard 3-3 when applicable, as well as the 3-2-1. And what will the Atlanta Reign attack into this? Neko, long known back from his Boston uprising days for being a Roadhog flex when necessary. You find a lot of flex supports flexing out of the Roadhog, and I'm still not exactly sure why that is, but even I was kind of drawn to the hog, despite my Zen and Anna uh, maining. Just fun to hook people, I don't know. All right, so Erster here, he came into this league known as a projectile DPS player, and he is a very good Genji. Yep. That's what they're going to be picking up coming into the start of this match. So it will be a dive composition. They, they will be playing the Sombra to flank instead of what we might have seen last season, which would have been the Tracer. Right. You know, yeah, Genji has long been used to kind of like break these Hard point compositions as you can get in the back line so fast. You can reflect damage. Logic going for the headshot on Dogman doesn't pan out. It's a nice shot on FRD though. He's oh, the nice hook. hook. Great combination of the headshot from Logix into the hook to D mech FRD. That's just going to slow everything down for the Atlanta Rain Dome. Yeah. In fact, he's just going to go back and switch off the hero and re mech that way. You have to, you know? Yeah, I didn't get enough old charge to wait around for that one. Oh, no. Oh, no. no. Masa gets hooked now. Neko with two crucial hooks already. That's early just, minutes. That's so sloppy. You just can't get greedy like that when your diva's going back. Remember, you don't have the Matrix to eat the hull. So yeah. you can't play super greedy in that situation and try and charge up your ult, because instead what you end up doing is just staggering yourself. So you wasted the D.Va ult charge as minimal as it was, and now you stagger yourself too. Nice bio grenade from Dogman. That great bio grenade. It's two members of Toronto. Yakwon pays for it. Pokebo down. Erster fights off Logics and in that DPS battle. Trying to prevent the res right now. Yep. So not going to be an option, though, as the respawn has already gone through. So good timing there by Erster, waiting just long enough. But God's got, God's has an EMP. Mangachu's gonna have Barrage. We could see a combo between those two to try to finish him, but no, they can't get there before the end of A. 
trying to scare him off right now. He could have EMP'd, but there would have been no follow-up because the nano boost on the Diviva had chased the Farmer's combo back. So that's a good nano boost, actually. You might say, eh, I don't know about that one, but it did get them the point, and it did prevent an EMP with a possible follow-up of Barrage. Yeah. Nano boost builds pretty quickly, too, so Dogman basically pressed Q to take point A. Yes. Pretty good trade. What is Mangachi looking for? Perhaps hunting Baby Bay down, who was... It's been communicated to him that there is an enemy infiltrating their backlines. Sombra spends much of her time invisible, so it's very hard to detect until she appears. She needs to be visible to do damage, though. And Aid has to use Valkyrie here. Solo support for the Defiant. Everybody's so split out, just taking, like, little poke damage from every angle. The only way he's going to be able to heal it up. Pop that Valkyrie, it'll be an EMP here used for Toronto. Where's the follow-up? Oh, there it is. It and was a little light. A big rocket barrage connects with three. Urster does take out Mangachu, but the damage is already done. Absolutely. Now, with half your team left, there's really no resistance you can offer. Ironically enough, Baby Bay was forced to use that EMP. He actually walked over a Venom Mine that Logic's Widow made the place down, revealing himself to all of his opponents. So he thought, well, I better just go for it now. In for a penny, in for a pound. Lana's going to have this Nano Boost plus Dragon Blade combo coming into this next fight. It's all on Urster. Can he get a good position? Can like he get guys. value out of this? Looking for a oh! kill! Logix takes him on though, head first into a bullet. High caliber round buried between his brows, and now Logix has to defend himself from a very angry monkey. Scientist, excuse me. Aid is taken down, Yakpum trying to hide behind that shield, but it only covers one direction, and God's set upon by all sides by a rabid rain squad who are very close to their second checkpoint and their second time extension. And when Logix picks up that kill on Urster in the sky, oh my. if you're Toronto, you think you win that as Neko just kind of walks out onto the point, tries to stall it, but that'll be Atlanta getting the second checkpoint on their way towards map completion. Neko was hoping to stall out and stand there and just heal, but he yeah. got hit by a biotic grenade from Dogman, so he was unable to heal and got blown up immediately. And this is going to force some changes from the Defiance, so now they get a two tank, two support, two damage dealer set up in play. Neko was hacked there by Baby Bay, manually of course, it wasn't an EMP. And the rain are trying to take cover here. Gods and Yakpung are in powerful positions. The high ground is an advantage on the battlefield. Real life and here. Here it is. Now the Dragon Strike coming through from the Toronto side as well. Mangachu pops that one. Uh, it's looking rough for Toronto. Atlanta rain off of Baby Bay's EMP. Good, be able to close this one out. It's all clean up now. And Pokemon's just gonna batter them back into spawn. Don't yep. Primal Rage, I don't think they can touch the cart. I don't think they can get there in time. They're gonna try oh. to Tracer. Logic's on the Tracer, keeps it going, but they gotta keep it up. They gotta keep people on that point right now. Logic's down, Pokemon with the Primal Rage, backs away and they can't get any else there. That is the end of the attack run. And Atlanta gets it done with a lot of time remaining. Very good attack for the Atlanta Reign there. Fun to see the Genji come out for Erster, Atlanta makes it happen with nearly three minutes in time bank. That is a massive time bank for Dorado. Well, that is how you close out a series. We'll see if they can do it with Toronto on a... Toronto, barring a collapse. We'll see Toronto if they can get it done on offense after this. are back. It's Toronto Defiance turn to attack here, but they have got a Herculean task ahead of them as there's 255 in the time bank for Atlanta Reign. Toronto not only need to finish, which Dorado is tough to do that on sometimes, 
but they need to finish with a lot of time at the bank if they want to hang with Rain in the extra rounds. Yeah, and Atlanta Rain says, well, we have a huge time bank, so we're just going to play 3-3 three, three here yeah, because not? it's the most consistent composition and we know we can just drain time off the clock. That's what this comp does. It plays the objective with high HP pools and high healing sustain, so you can't move the objective. You know, the big difference that we still see, though, is uh, the Ana. Still worked in there now, just in case you need to fight off some DPS. The Nano Boost is always useful. So you do see the Zen left by the wayside, even when teams switch back to what was a more traditional 3-3 lately. Yeah, also, I think in this case, too, the Ana gives you more pressure on the Farah, which Definitely. you assume Manga yeah. is going to run. It's anti-DPS at the end of the day. Manga Chu, speaking of that, not really feeling the pressure right now as he's sending rocket after rocket into the Atlanta rain. Again, already halfway to another barrage, and there's not a lot of things denying that rocket. Maybe be a little bit low here. Needs to find Dogman for some healing. Not quite yet. Oh, Manga Chu, he's going to have a garage like almost instantly here yeah you have to find that opening so they need either a nano boost or the emp to use it though and you can see neko and god's pretty far behind dog man's been healing out of his mind now logic's just swapped to the hanzo yakpong swaps to the wrecking ball actually so changes mid push coming in from the Toronto defiant already back right now into dog man uh oh does it stop dog man from there left clicking go. though <laughs> i mean that's the thing at the end of the day it's all about uh facing uh, that pharmacy and winning right and you're going to be able to Get those shots in if you're the Ana in a way that uh, Zen is much tougher to do. Uh, she's gonna try so and accurate. force the Farah back before Mercy comes back online. Manga to the target of Justice. Oh, Justice is just dead. As Manga only getting the kill on the Baby Bay, which, which is big. That might be enough actually to keep Toronto pushing. And the Baby Bay kill, he's gonna switch onto the Widowmaker now, so makes a late swap. However, as we look at the rain, no more nano boost right now. Defiant coming up on a lot of ultimates, including their own EMP. It's been a slow EMP build here for gods, for sure. Yeah, really, really slow. Two minutes so far, and he doesn't have it. That is not a great EMP charge time. You want one of those every about minute, minute, 10 seconds if you can. Pretty much. That's what the best ones are putting up, numbers-wise. Oh, and God's the sleep. Oh, man. And the grenade. Down. Dogman finds him in the end. Meanwhile, Baby Bay, that Widowmaker swap, putting even more pressure onto the Pharmacy. Logics with a kill on the Baby Bay, though. Chance, can he hit the shot on Amasa? No, not quite. Looking for it. All right, Dragon Strike going through. Just trying to push back Atlanta Rain so they can get some progress on that payload. Sleep Dart on the Poco now. There's the EMP. Masa gets the sound barrier off instead, though. Or just in time, rather. And then get you close to another barrage. Oh! Baby Bay! He killed Mangachu right as he got his barrage. That is so huge for Atlanta. And now Toronto Defiant with only about a minute left. Massa has been such a hero with these sound barriers today. It is ridiculous. Yeah. Atlanta Rain have been powered by their support lines. Dogman's bio grenades have been excellent. Massa's sound barriers have been excellent at shutting down EMPs. And so we waited all this time, Doa. We waited over three minutes for an EMP. And when it comes, Massa just waves his finger and says, no. Uh -uh. It's too good at playing hide the frog. He's always out of view. Right ultimate. Popo. I'll see if he goes for the chatter here. Uh, goes in. Ooh, didn't get it behind the shield in time. And he's down. Logix finds the kill with the Zarya here. Atlanta ran in a little bit of trouble. Depends on how well they, they can click heads during this intersight. If they get the kills, they might be able to turn it. Uh, a lot of pressure on him, though. He's got to run. He's down. Mangachu chasing him, getting him with the whip shot. And it looks like at the end, despite the great defense from Atlanta Rain, they might have to take it to point B after all. And there's still some movement on the card here, so it's not impossible for them to recontest. But with Baby Bay switching off, they are not going to make that decision. And instead, they're going to fall back. They know how much time they have at the bank. Yeah. And the fact that they pushed it nearly to overtime on A is enough for them. I mean, unless this uh, is like the fastest point B in history of Overwatch, they're going to have a better time bank no matter what, pretty much. You're almost guaranteed at this point. Nice sleep dart. Ooh, no comes down. in on the Neko there. Now yeah, Nano Boost meanwhile on the Atlanta side. And yeah, Mangachu down. Eight as well. Anna Rain storming back in. So they knew the, the Nano Boost was up on the Defiant. They knew Neko had it. So Dogman sleeps Neko, then uses his own Nano Boost and Grenade. The Nano Boost forces Yakpun to drop his shield. The Grenade comes right in. That was great play from Dogman. Yep. He's on fire today, man. The crowd buff is real, after all. 
IFRD. Really close to that self-destruct. Atlanta Rain with another tool to try to slow things down. Yakung needs a great shatter here. They need to take advantage of this grab. You know what? Forget about the shatter. To get the nano boost and swing through everybody. Yeah, nano boost, rally, graviton. Can't do much about that. FRD gonna buy as much time as he possibly can on the payload. Dogman making a change now. Interesting to the Zenyatta. Huh, all right. So wanting to have that Discord Orb as well as an additional ultimate that they can use to shut down Logix's grab. Yeah, I think that's probably wise. It, it is about time. You know you're not going to be facing the DPS again, so go for that better defensive ultimate. You also just saw the Nano Boost, so yep. you know by the time they have Nano again, you'll probably have Transcendence to counter it. So probably. it's probably a good time to swap. Uh, sleep start on the Urster for a moment, but it looks like he's okay. Atlanta Rain. Just have to defend her one more minute. Oh, but the sun comes through. Whoa. Logic's just ejected from the fight, but not kill. Yakon, not able to find his team any kills. They're going to go into the sound barrier. Neko, ooh, Baby Bay taken out by the grenade. And now, Atlanta Rain, with that rally, might have enough to stand strong here. We'll see. It's a God's just trying to do what he can. Oh, there goes Popo, though. And Toronto starting to grind through. Oh, man. Dog, man. 95% towards his ultimate. Just goes and resets. Everybody's saying die on the payload, I'm sure, in comps right now. They're gonna try. There is a sleep right now onto the D.Va. Self-destruct available. How much everybody should be able to just die here and reset. Can they get the respawn in in time, though? I think they can. Dogman gonna come back with the Transcendence. That's really it, right? Is that Transcendence might buy them time to get FRD back. He's back right now, but he's gotta make it out. Here we go. Atlanta Rain, a chance to win the series right here with a good fight at the end of B. Rally comes in from Toronto to find. There's an Ana Boost on the Yacht Pung looking for that shatter. He just got it up right now. Oh, Neko down. FRD finds him with the self destruct. Pokemon yeah. Masa take it out as well. Baby Bay slipped, destroyed. And it looks like Toronto Defiant says, not yet. We're going to keep this pushing. They're going to keep it pushing, Doa. Another shatter from Yakpung. Yakpung on the side of the Defiant has been hitting the big shatters that they needed today in these desperation moments to keep their push powered. Yeah. And now Atlanta Rain. They just have to hold here for a minute. Regardless, Toronto Defiant are going to have a much weaker time bank. For sure. The best they can hope for is like 30 seconds or something. I mean, it's it's going to be rough. If they get stopped at all. Nice and move from God. Yeah, God's forces the fight. Poke for a little bit low. Shatter comes in, and it's a good one from Atlanta Rain. Everyone has to take a break to run from the self-destruct. Meanwhile, Atlanta Rain's still on that payload. Logic's pushing forward. He's got some good damage coming out of that Zarya right now. Meanwhile, on board with Baby Bay, he's nearly at the grab. There he is. Logic's going to be know. after, though. 90%. Towards his grab right now. Atlanta Rain pulling back. Yep. All right, grab goes in. Atlanta Rain, they got to come to the sound barrier, and they lost Popo. It's a 6v5 in favor of Toronto, and they've got the rally as well. Aid with the sound barrier. That goes charging forward. Going to use that transcendence to keep everybody alive. And Toronto, once again, coming out on top. Atlanta Rain just not coming up in the clutch right now. I mean, too aggressive on the grab right there. Yeah. Atlanta Rain, Popo tried to charge into it after Sound Barrier had been used. When you see the Sound Barrier just fall back, just I fall mean, back. God's with a great boot to force that fight to begin with. Huge for Toronto right there. And now Yakpong went for the shatter. Popo down, all right. Yakpong taken out as well. That might be it. Atlanta Rain's eliminated the main tank. Can they get more, though? Self-destruct. God's still in the payload, making you low. And yep, I don't think you can win that 4v6. I think Atlanta Rain takes it right here with the Zarya falling. There is nothing left for the Toronto Defiant to finish this map with. And Atlanta Rain, in front of the home crowd, finally get their stage three win. Their first win of the stage, keeping them alive in the season playoff standings for sure. An important victory and a meaningful one in front of the Rain fans. Yeah, it's got to feel great. And, you know, we mentioned, too, this has much bigger season implications as both of these teams were 7 and 12 coming into this match. Atlanta Rain putting themselves still in the hunt for that top 12 play in spot. It's a great start for Atlanta here in their homestand. Really yep. fun game to watch here for the rain. And you know, the Defiant, 
they really came out looking pretty good here compared to what we've seen from them in past weeks. These player editions, they seem to be starting to shape a strategy around logics, around Mangachu. Yeah, it's working well. You know, they really did too. And, and I got to say, playing great under duress as well. I mean, it's tough to play sometimes in front of such a hostile crowd. And even though Gods clearly loves it, maybe not everybody else feels the same way. And so to come out and perform like that, I think that's a that's a match that you lost, but you can still feel pretty good about it. Oh yeah, if you're a Toronto fan. Yeah, I think I think if you're a Toronto fan, you're happy to see the level of innovation and the teamwork coming together off of a roster that was so recently added to. Yeah, it's it's definitely coming around right now. And let's send it down to Emily, who's got Masa standing by for an interview. Guys. Congratulations to the home team. Give it up for Dogman and the Atlanta Rain. Now, Dogman, you were obviously in your element. I saw you soaking up all the fans, soaking up all the love during your walkout. But what's going on through your head? What's been your favorite moment so far? Oh, man, everything. Walking out, coming on stage and playing, people laughing when I say, Yakpung's a feeder, you know. It's all fun. It's all fun. I'm loving it. Now, you guys came off a really nice win against the Toronto Defiant, but the Atlanta Reign had a pretty rough stage three. Do you guys think that this homestand weekend will be that turning point for you guys? Oh, yes, for sure. Atlanta, with Atlanta's power and Atlanta's energy, we can easily make this back. I mean, I'm just really happy we're not at Valiant and going 0 7. So, Atlanta, we're bringing wins home. Let's go. Another epic post game interview <laughs> from Dogman. Well, thank you guys so much. <laughs> oh, well, you know what? Now that we have the entire team here, what do you guys think about the crowd? Yeah, you guys are the absolute best. It's unbelievable. I, words cannot even describe this moment right now. It's insane. Like we said, a great feeling to get a win in front of the home crowd. That's right. It had to happen at some time. Well, it didn't have to happen, actually. But, uh, <laughs> you know, they made, it, uh, they made it look good. They made it look good. And they really came online. That Volskaya loss was, I think, tough, especially at the hands of the Toronto Defiant, who full held them. But they bounced back immediately, showed off some really fun stuff, especially on Dorado there. Yeah, it's good no to kidding. See. Good to see that Genji from Rooster again. It is. I mean, the, Genji is, is a hero that's been sadly neglected in the meta, but, you know, maybe maybe we'll see a little bit more as time goes on. Let's take a look at our Omen by HP player of the match. It's going to be Masa. That's right. Support extraordinaire. Getting sound barriers when they needed to. I mean, he's the just... The when they needed to. He was just ridiculous today, and mostly it was his ultimate usage, honestly. Yeah. Just, it's so hard to be consistent with the sound barrier animation. You have to hide effectively from the, so the Sombra, and then you have to predict the EMP, and then use that sound barrier at exactly the right time to make sure it covers before someone dies from the EMP usage. Yeah. He was absolutely phenomenal at that today. I think he's the biggest reason why the Atlanta Reign were able to shut down the Toronto Defiance so effectively. Like uh, Overwatch League 2019 season and hide and seek champion for sure, man. He <laughs> didn't get EMP'd uh, barely at all in that series. Yeah, good stuff from Masa. You know, he's he's an aggressive Lucio player. We've seen that from him, but the teamwork today really put him over the top. Yep, that's right. So he's our Omen by HP player of the match. And that was our third match. But guys, we've got one more series coming up. Oh, hi. Hi, crowd. How's it going? We, we were here too. <laughs> Stick around. It's going to be Guangzhou Charge taking on the Shanghai Dragons when we come back. It's been a great weekend, and day one is not over yet. Another match coming at you in just a moment. The Overwatch League is brought to you by T Mobile, now connecting 99% of Overwatch League fans. Catch your league on America's network, T-Mobile.